It had to happen eventually, a manufacturer bringing out a digital SLR with video capability. Hi, I'm Matt Grayson and today Photozine TV are taking a look at the Nikon D90, the first camera with HD capability. So here it is in all its glory, the Nikon D90. This is fitted with the 18 to 105 standard lens, which has got the vibration reduction. Um, that is Nikon's uh, image stabilizing system. Um, the lens is very, very good and has got some good reviews. Uh, unfortunately, the only thing that really lets it down is that it's got a plastic lens mount, uh, which can wear down faster than, uh, than your standard metal mount, so, which is a shame. Moving to the top plate, um, everything is laid out the same as the previous D80 model, which the Nikon D90 replaces. Um, the buttons are basically the same, they're just a slightly different shape. Moving on to the back, you'll see that the screen is now bigger. Uh, the D-pad has been lowered slightly to accommodate the new live view button uh, which wasn't on the D80 and the sliding lock switch is now a rotating type. Um, also the left side doesn't curve in um, making for the camera to look a little bit more boxier. All the buttons that are down the left side are basically the same uh, but the OK button has now been moved to the centre of the D-pad. So what's the D90 got that sets it apart from the D80. Well, apart from the HD video, it's also got a, a larger 12.3 million pixel sensor, which brings it in line with the D3, D700, D300 that were previously released over the past year. It's also got the X-Speed processor, which is the much nicer um, colours and much better, much faster processing uh, than the previous models. And also, interestingly enough, it's got an auto and manual focus switch on the lens. This could indicate that they're beginning to go lens-based with the uh, autofocus and manual focus switches. Um, but obviously they'll need to put it on the body for use on older lenses. Another feature that's new to the D90, which is actually the newest feature of, uh, of any of the current SL DSLR models, is uh, set it within the active D lighting mode and, and that's an extra high setting. Now the D3, D300, D700 have all got uh, D lighting up to high. It has off, low and high and, uh, and the extra high gives it that extra little bit of boost into the, uh, into the low key areas bringing a little bit more information out into the, uh, into the shadowed areas there. The D90 comes with this protective screen which uh, fits over the rear screen on the back of the camera and keeps it all nice and safe from scratches, fingerprints, anything that you may want to uh, throw at it. What it does do however, even though they've cut a little bit away, is it still kind of gets in the way of the uh, navigation pad when you're pressing the left button, which is unfortunate. Now if we go into the menu system, just by pressing the menu button right there, you'll see that you've got a row of sub-features down the side and uh, little menus within each, uh, each feature there. And you just press left to go into the different ones. So at the top you've obviously got your playback menu for uh, any fi anything when you're looking at your images. The shooting menu is for actually taking pictures. So for instance, you've got your picture control. Um, Canon call this picture style. It comes in different terms, but it all means the same thing. If you go into there, it basically changes the, uh, the type of photograph that you're doing. So vivid will boost the colors. Neutral will mute them slightly. Monochrome obviously turns them to black and white. Portrait sets them up for portrait, but you'll find out find that these are also adjustable within these so if you sit it onto the portrait mode um, then it just warms the colors of the skin tones up slightly uh, you know and, and selects an aperture which throws everything out of focus behind the portrait subject um, but with this one this is done within stuff like the aperture priority or the manual or the manual or shutter priority and it says there press right to adjust and you can actually change stuff like the sharpening the saturation and the hue of the image which you can't do in the uh, in the normal one. You can also do a quick adjust, and you can't do that in pro in portrait mode. So we'll say OK to that. You can also change the image quality and the image size if you're in JPEG, uh, adjust the white balance, etc. We're now going to test the D90 to see just how good the HD video really is.
So I hope that gives you an accurate idea of whether you think this camera is for you. I certainly like it. I think there's a lot of benefits that could come to a lot of people. I'm a little confused at who it's aimed at. I think it's probably aimed at the compact user who's currently got a camera that's got a video feature and they want to keep that, but they want to move up into DSLR territory. But that's not to say that professionals can't benefit from it. They could use it as a backup camera, especially if they're wedding photographers, they could then get their assistant taking video footage. And that gives you um, an extra angle, it gives you an extra bit to use as a presentation piece, as well as an extra product in the form of DVDs to sell.